On this episode of Do Something Every Day 2, I'm going to show you how to put together this Sheffield 2 convertible crib. What do you think, Garrett? So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the box. Do not return your product. Ever. They don't want it. I suppose next we ought to find out what's inside the box. Oh, uh, what's in the box? It should be noted that the instructions are attached, actually zip tied, to the underside of this metal springboard. So there it is unboxed, everything you need to build a crib, plus all the screws to hold it together. Dear companies who put letters on the sides of parts so you know what order to put them together in, you the real MVP. The first thing you should do is dump out all of your hardware onto somewhere that you won't forget to take out the instructions from underneath of it, and well, there goes our pile. That looks a little bit nicer. The instructions say the first thing you should do is start with the letter A. So go ahead and grab all the letter A parts that you can find. The letters are down here next to all the other warning stickers. And here's our two bars that go with it. Oops. Next we get onto hardware. You're going to need four three inch long screws, two wooden dowels, and four of these T-nuts. Orient your first board so that the two holes on the sides of it are at the top and the single hole is at the bottom. The top hole is where you're going to be inserting the two dowels, one on one side and one on the other. Next you're going to find your parts A2 and A1. You're going to want to make sure that the hole is closest at the top on the top. And what I mean is this one isn't as close to the bottom as it is to the ground, so you want that one in this orientation. Likewise on the other one. You can now press the dowel into the top hole. It's going to want to spin on you, so you're going to want to be able to support it somehow. I imagine you're supposed to put this together while it's on the ground, but I'm not that smart. Go ahead and grab your T-nuts and four of those long screws. Next, what it shows you doing is taking one of the T-nuts, inserting it underneath while simultaneously running a screw through the end of this and praying that you hit that T-nut where there's threads. How about that? I don't think we want to tighten anything up just quite yet. It goes the same on the bottom. They supply you an Allen key so that you can turn these. I think since we have half of it together, we should be able to tighten it up at least a little bit. Let's repeat the process on the other side. Now that we've got side A done, it's time to do side B. That's going to be done exactly the same way. So go ahead and do that on your own. Now that you've got both sides put together, you may notice that one of them is unfinished at the top on each side. This may seem very disconcerting, and trust me, it is for me too. I'm not sure why it's like that. The next thing you'll want to do is grab the items marked with a C. To put both item C's together, you're going to need two wooden dowels, the last two that you have, and three of these two and a half inch screws. Along the top of this piece, there's actually five holes. You're going to put your wooden dowels in the two holes second in from the end. So first hole, then put a dowel, then a hole, and all the way at the end, first hole, then put a dowel. Then, you're going to place your C1 bar on top, where the wooden dowel holes will line up, and then, you're going to come underneath, and you're going to run your two and a half inch screw up through. There's threaded inserts in this top bar up here, so it's not like you're screwing into wood. And again, we're going to go ahead and snug these all up. Now with all that done, we're off to the next step. Notice my crazy enthusiasm. It's starting to get hot in this room. We will now be joining A, B, and C together using four of these T-nuts and four of these two and a half inch screws. And you may think, oh, I'm still kind of nervous about that weird spot that wasn't finished. Hence this one and same on the other side. But that's okay, because they're actually going to get tucked up underneath here, so you're never going to see it. So why would they waste the extra stain on these? Another way that the company can save money in the long run when you produce thousands of a particular type of object. Here's my top tip of the day. If you're only one person, try leaning one end, this one, all the way on the ground. Then it can't fall off going this way. Overall, I'm very pleased with this assembly so far. It's fairly clear instructions and pretty simple to put together. Confucius say, 
It takes many screws to build a crib, but only one to fill it. Think about that. It should roughly self-support itself now. So I got that going. Which is nice. You should be able to see it a little bit easier from this angle. T-nut goes in the back on the top. There we go. Alrighty, now it's really starting to come together. I guess what was the other option? It would fall apart. The next thing we're going to need is our screen and four of these screws with the Teflon tape, the blue tape. So you'll notice that the bottom screen actually says this side up. Very nice of them to put that on there. Otherwise it might be pretty confusing. So the idea is that you carefully set this in, although it's not really going to be supported by anything. And you're going to want to put your screws in at the level or height that you want. So we're going to want this closer up because he's still pretty small and we take them in and out all the time. But then later on you can move it down to here. I believe that's for when they get all grown up. So, let's, uh, let's try and do what I just said. Okay, well we got one in. Maybe if I get the diagonal one in. It'll make my life terrible. Okay, let's go for the one in the back. Sorry for the shoddy camera work, but gotta do this. So now we got both the back ones in, so we can go ahead and put the front ones in. Oh, there you go. Use your knee. Or if you have a partner, loved one, or sucker that you could use to assist you with this process, that would help too. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this first one so that it doesn't fall. We'll go back here and do the last one on this side. Are you supposed to sweat when you're putting a crib together? Or do you just sweat when you're out of shape? Do you guys know how weird it feels talking to just a camera? It's kind of weird. Anyway, let's go ahead and snug this up. Then I'll get behind here. Snug this one up. It's really starting to look like a crib now. Our last step is to grab the last piece of the puzzle, and that's going to be the front, and that's going to go together with some of those T-nuts and some of those screws just like the other sides did. Finally. Now all I have left to do is put in the bottoms. Come on. Jeez. Now with all those screws in, you can move it into the spot where you want to put it. Luckily it's not too heavy. That works. Wait, I think I'm missing something. Yeah, baby mattress. Cool, look at that. That looks pretty nice. If only we had a test baby we could use. Hooray, a test baby. How's that kiddo? Better get used to these bars, kid. Quick, what's the movie reference? Well, I'm not sure about you, but I think we're gonna wrap up this episode and do something every day too. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it somewhat helpful. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. As a side note, this crib can turn into a uh, full-size mattress, but only if you buy the separately sold pieces. So yeah, if you were expecting it to be a two-in-one right now, guess you expected wrong.